Howdy. Welcome back. Today we're outside the Dizzy Pig Test Kitchen, firing up the grill, Mexican style. That means we're going to cook a south of the border feast with chicken, skirt steak, and blue marlin. And to season it, we're using our new fajita-ish blend. So let's get grilling. What we figured we're going to do tonight is a kind of a, everybody you know, sits around with the little uh, taco tortillas and builds their own little soft tacos. And uh, I thought, whoop, what a great way to mix it up and to have beef and chicken and fish. And of course, you always have uh, peppers and onions. I, I got some skirt steaks here, some beautiful, well-marbled skirt steaks. And they're just gorgeous. And this is the best beef to use for fajitas. Look how long that piece of meat is there. So I'm going to trim these things up. And we're going to season them up and throw them on the grill a little bit later. These are beautiful pieces of beef. Um, I got them down at Eastern Market downtown. Just gorgeous. I think they're going to grill up real nice. The key is to get a little bit of this fat off. A little bit's not going to hurt. Actually, you're going to want that in your mouth. But I like to get most of it off, almost down to the meat. I line up here with some others I've already trimmed. Now I'm going to put some, I'm going to season these things up good. And we're going to let them like sit for a little while for the seasoning to kind of melt in. But also like something you'll see me doing here is adding, a, I'm, going to, I'm going to be adding a little bit of salt when I season these things up. Because our rubs are not that salty. And with beef, you always want a little bit of salt on there. Uh, it, if for some reason. On the chicken, I'm not going to add any salt. Like the rub has some salt in it, it's going to be enough for the chicken. But on the beef, I'm going to add a little bit of salt. So the first thing I'm going to do is just give it a little bit hit, uh, a hit of salt. Now I like to use a coarse kosher salt because you can see the grains. And um, if you're using a fine salt, you never know how much you're putting on. So I use a big coarse salt and I'll just take a light coat and just, you can see the flakes sitting right there on top of the meat so you can tell you're not over salting it. Just wanna get a little bit of salt down to give it some measure. Now these are pretty thin pieces of meat so I'm only gonna salt one side. But then I'm gonna put the rub on pretty heavy. The reason I'm going to put it on so heavy is because we're going to be searing it over a real high temperature. And that's going to brown that rub. And almost uh, mellow it out to almost a nutty flavor. If you weren't browning it, you wouldn't put as much on. Probably use a little more salt and a little less rub. But we're going to be browning the heck out of these things over a real hot fire. So don't be shy with it. And I'm going to rub up one side and I'm going to let it sit for five minutes and I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. And we got some beautiful pieces of fish too. I don't know if they were like just caught or what. The guy told me they were fresh, but it's blue marlin, which I've never had. And from what I understand, it's a lot like a swordfish steak, maybe a little bit tougher, but we're not going to overcook it. And I think that's going to be the key. So I got one side of my skirt steaks all seasoned up. And let them sit for a little bit. We'll get right into our fish. Um, a swordfish or blue marlin is a great fish to put on the grill because it's a firm flesh. It's a real meaty fish. These things look great. And they smell so fresh, they smell like salt water almost. I don't smell any fish smell at all. That's one thing too, when you're picking out fish at the store, you always want to ask the guy, can you smell it first? And uh, have him hand it over and take a whiff, because if it stinks, you don't want to be cooking it. All right, so I'm going to do these things the same way. I'm going to put a good bit on here, because uh, and we're going to brown these in a cast iron pan, real hot. So once again, we're going to have a high heat and we're going to have a little bit of time to brown this stuff on. So I'm not being shy with it. This has real fresh cumin. 
it doesn't stray too far from what you expect in a Mexican seasoning. But it's a lot fresher because we use all whole fresh spices. Just flip it over. I'm not going to let this like sit as long before I flip it because I'm just going to rub it up and cover it up because I want to keep these things nice and cold till I throw them on the grill. And then finally, we're going to rub up our chicken. Guess what we're going to use? Fajita-ish. So I'm going to get these in the fridge here in a minute. Let's go ahead and knock this chicken down. Now I've already rubbed up a fair portion of it. And actually, I'm going to change my gloves here because I've just been handling the fish. So these are boneless, skinless thighs. And uh, I think it's much better than like a breast meat if you're cooking fajitas or any kind of a grill like that because there's a little bit more margin on, on uh, cooking it perfectly. Um, you can overcook a breast real easy. It's real hard to overcook these. And they taste great. And they're real easy. If you get the boneless ones, all you gotta do is just shake the rub on it and throw them on the grill. Now a lot of people use a marinade and don't hesitate to do that. If you've got some other flavors you want to add, if you want to do some cilantro and some tequila or something like that, that's fine. But this rub is going to give you plenty of flavor. And so all we're doing today is using the seasoning. And I think our guests will be surprised how much flavor is in here even without a marinade. So once we get these like seasoned up, like these things have been like sitting for a while and see how the rub is kind of, you know, set into them and see how here it's kind of sitting on top. It's nice to get it a little bit, you know, set in before you put it on the grill. But here, I think we're just going to throw these things on and they'll be just fine. The grill's ready over here. I'm going to do is give it a good brush. I'm going to get this chicken on the grill here. We got a nice medium fire. I'm going to put this chicken right over the charcoal and it, it's going to cook about maybe 20 minutes on the side. My fire is probably about 275 to 300 degrees. I just want to slowly brown these things up so that spices are all nutty and fragrant. And these are thighs so they take a little while to cook. So we're figuring 15, 20 minutes aside and I'm just going to let them roll. Smell good already. And so what we're going to do now is I got these other two cookers going here. I'm going to get those things fired up real hot for the skirt steaks and the tuna. I'll see you back here. While Chris is outside, we're going to start on the Mexican rice inside. What we have so far in our pot sauteing is some chopped up onion, some chopped up poblano peppers which were roasted and some cubanelle peppers which were roasted ahead of time. We steamed those, peeled them, chopped them up, and they're in the pot with the onions. There is also, just for a little extra kick, there's a serrano pepper that's been cut in half, seeded, and just thrown in their hole so we can fish it out afterwards so we don't offend anybody with that really strong spiciness. Uh, we've got this sauteing up nicely, and to it now we're gonna add some chopped up garlic. The chopped up garlic, I like to add a little bit, not at the very beginning, because it can burn a little faster than the onions can. So we let the onions go for a little while first, and then we go ahead and add up, add that chopped up garlic. That's sauteing up nicely. Now you know we have to dizzyfy this recipe, so what we're going to do is we're going to add our fajita-ish seasoning. And we're just going to add, oh, I should probably, about a tablespoon or so. and four cups of long grain rice. Now at this point, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna go ahead and turn up the heat on this a little bit and kind of give our lice, rice a little bit of brownness before we add our liquid. You can do that, that's optional, but it really gives it a nice nutty flavor at the end. Now, of course, the peppers were charred ahead of time out on the grill. That gives them that wonderful grill flavor and will really add 
a nice touch to the rice at the end. All right, we've got that rice browning nicely. And what we have in the pitcher is some chicken stock and some canned tomatoes that we went ahead and blended up ahead of time. And that's gonna be our liquid for the rice. That's gonna give it a nice Mexican touch. That with that fajita-ish seasoning in there, it will be perfect. Now, hopefully you guys can hear that. I know you can't smell it, but I hope you can hear it because it's gonna be really good. It's browned up nicely. We're gonna add our liquid. We will let that come to a boil. All right, while the rice is cooking, we're gonna go ahead and let it simmer for 20 minutes. In the meantime, we'll head down to Chris and see how the mixed grill is coming outside. Okay, thanks, Joe Ellen. We're gonna get ready to flip this uh, chicken that's been on about 20 minutes. It'll probably be good and brown by now. On one side, and yeah, look at that color on there. That's your flavor. So we'll just flip these over real quick and let them go another 20 minutes. And uh, we got the other cookers that are getting good and hot for the skirt steak and the fish. Move these other ones to the center where it's a little hotter. We'll be back in a few and we'll get that, that fish and that skirt steak going. Okay, we're coming in now, the chicken's almost done, and we're gonna start our onions and peppers. You can't have Mexican grill without onions and peppers. I got a little grapeseed oil, and I'm using that because it's got a high burning point. I'm gonna put our onions in. Get them spread out. Now these guys are gonna cook two, three, four minutes, whatever, until they're getting a little bit brown on the outside, and then we're gonna add our peppers. Putting the peppers in. Onion's got a little brown, lost one there. Let them go a minute or two tops, and they're gonna be just right, in a big old hot pan and then we'll get those skirt steaks on. Oh, these peppers are sizzling up good. Getting a little soft. I still like a little crunch to them, so they're coming off. We're gonna do the fish in the same pan. It's a good old hot pan. Woo wee! I said you're gonna if you have a gas grill you're gonna want to turn it up all the way for this. Heat is your friend. Add some more grapeseed oil for that fish, and we'll get them fajitas rocking. Or get that skirt steak rocking. <clears throat> so we got a real hot fire here. We're, we're reading uh, 750 on the thermometer. I'm gonna set them on, and I'm gonna hit the backside with the seasoning. Mmm. It's gonna be no more than a couple minutes of size. So we got nice browning on them things. Look at that. Holy cow. 
I couldn't have worked that better. <laughs> yeah, we got these things all seared off. You can see that brown crust on there. And these things are so thin, you need to have a really high heat to get that brown gl glistening crust. That they, this is just gonna be awesome. Okay, there's a little second batch. Ready to come off. This thing sizzling goodness. These things can rest a few minutes, won't hurt them at all. And we got the pan all ready for the fish over there. Oh yeah. Good hot pan. Let that go for until you start smelling it. It's smelling like it's browning, then you know it's time to flip it. We got a little ways to go. I can smell that nuttiness right now. That thing is browned up good. Let's let's see what we got. Flip these things over. Oh yeah, look at that. Good and nutty. Well brown. We'll let them go another minute and they're gonna be ready. We'll see you at the table. Thanks for stopping by and checking out how we season our Mexican grill with fajita-ish. If you want to experience a little bit of this for yourself, log on to dizzypigbbq.com or check out our Facebook and Twitter page. As always, enjoy the flavors and happy cooking. And get spun. I love Dizzy Pig because you can put it on anything. It makes it so full of flavor and so delicious. It's just the best. Steak, chicken, pork, even fish, and desserts. It's just already packaged for you. You don't have to add anything else. It's, it's just perfect the way it is.